Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, haven't produced a video or uploaded a video for a little while now. I've been uh, very busy with the shop, etc. So I thought I'd just put up for your entertainment. Considering I live in Cha Am, we start off with some uh, footage of Cha Am, a rehash of some of the things that transpired in 2021 for me. As you all know, or most of you know, I live in Cha Am, so this first footage is of Cha Am, and then the next uh, piece of footage is a trip I did up to uh, Ayutthaya, uh, the historical city, former uh, capital of uh, Siam at one stage. Uh, a lot of damage done by the Burmese when they overtook the place, of course, but the ruins up there are absolutely fantastic. It's uh, a good trip. It was a great trip on the bike. It was my first long-range test run on the bike, so on the Forza when I bought it. So, yeah, had fun up there. It was really nice. After that, I think um, my next trip was uh, up to uh, Khao Yai on my... Uh, road trip north where I went as far as, uh, as uh, started off in Khao Yai, Bangkok then Khao Yai which this footage is of and then I headed up uh, stopping at various places uh, all the way to Khon Khan and on the way back I went to Surin and Surin and um, uh, Khao Yai is a beautiful place look at this it was just amazing there a lot of these places I recommend that you go to, to visit. Yeah, so, and then, um, of course, Surin, and then I went to Korat on the way back, and Ayutthaya again on the way back, and then when I came back, of course, uh, I did the tat, got the ink down in Hua Hin, and uh, I was really happy with the way that turned out. And, uh, of course, on the trip north, stopped at Buriram. This is some footage in Buriram. A big Buddha up on top of the mountain, a sunset. And then from Buriram, I went to a few other places, Konkan being one of them. This is a big lake in Konkan, where I think they have uh, boat races and such and a bit of fishing. And, yeah, Konkan was really nice. I met up with a friend there and had... You know, a couple of nights out and uh, stayed in a nice hotel, visited a few places, uh, didn't do too much, but uh, had a bit of a look around, had a look in this temple, which was uh, uh, sort of uh, right next to the lake there. And then um, after that, visited uh, a nice little uh, botanical garden uh, in uh, Con Can, this place here, uh, another sort of Instagram set up this place, like most places in Thailand, set up for Instagram, Instagram hotels, Instagram gardens, went for a night out, watched a really good band, and uh, yeah, was like Blondie, this girl, yeah, was really good, and then of course during the year I um, came back to Cha Am after that trip, did some other videos, visited some other places and set up the show. Uh, I think we'll still get some local customers once the word gets around about the incredibly delicious Aussie burgers with beetroot. Doing my own promo. Of course, this footage is the, uh, the building before I got in there and renovated. Just to give you an idea of the task I had ahead of me. It was an absolute pigsty and a rat's nest that hadn't been inhabited by any business or human beings for quite some time, I think like a couple of years. So <clears throat> I pumped a bit of time and a bit of money into it and um, you can see it was an absolute mess. So I had to fix the roof, I had to retile the floor, had to rip out the big mirror on the wall and... Uh, yeah, it was an absolute mess, but you can see, uh, and those people that have been to the shop recently or who go to the shop who are customers of mine uh, understand now seeing this as compared to what it is now. It's a really beautiful place and have a lot of regular customers 
a lot of people talk about the food. Sure, I'm doing a bit of promo here, but uh, a lot of people say to me, best burgers in Cha'am, a couple of even said to me, the best burgers in all of Thailand. Yeah, so it was a bit of a uh, drama. and uh, uh, It took like a month to renovate the shop to get it what it is now. And uh, it's turned out pretty good. Equipment cost me quite a bit of money. I've got an extra freezer besides that small one now, and I've got an extra hot plate cooker, griller as well, and uh, another fridge, etc., etc. As you know, you're always adding on when you do these things, but it's a limited space and it works really well. And the staff, my one staff member, manager, is fantastic. Uh, all the customers love her yeah I really love her she does a great job she's OCD cleaning so that's fantastic for a shop and the shop's working really well now please come and visit if you come to Cha'am the Billabong Aussie Diner then of course there was the uh, episode I did uh, the series on internet dating uh, as talking heads say the less we say it, the better. About it, the better. It was a disaster. And then uh, also during the year, I went up and visited Wildlife Friends Foundation Animal Sanctuary run by Edwin Wick. I'll put a donation link under this video because this guy does an absolutely amazing job. He has heaps of elephants, heaps of gibbons, all types of animals up there. He's got three full-time vets. And of course, you'd imagine, you know, it costs a lot of money to feed these animals and care for these animals. I really love this place. I'm gonna go back up there again. I'd really love it, you know, if you people could uh, send a donation. I'll put a donation link under the video in the information. Please donate and help save these animals. As you can see, he's got a fantastic setup up there. It's a beautiful place. These animals now have freedom, peace, no torture, no working, and uh, have a really beautiful place to spend the rest of their days after they've been rescued from the logging camps and working, etc. And then, of course, I went through my little mental trauma and had to go away somewhere to a meditative place, and I headed off to Dolphin Bay. Uh, if you've seen the video, you, knew, you would know that I was going through a bit of uh, mental stress at the time, and I went down here, uh, for a couple of days retreat just to uh, meditate as the Maharishi says and uh, get my boogie back together climbed the mountain sat on the mountain in the rain meditated for a while got my head back together got rid of the uh, particular uh, obsessions I was uh, dealing with and all in all had a wonderful time and then, of course, there was uh, my many trips up to Kankrachan, the uh, reservoir, the dam up there that uh, feeds our water down here. A beautiful place. I've been there many, many times. Haven't managed to get to the waterfalls yet, but nonetheless, still a beautiful place. Uh, you've got to visit this place. It's really good. And you can get a boat out to the Monkey Island where all the monkeys come and jump in the water and swim out to the to the boat and you can feed them you know you pay a hundred baht for a bag of food for the monkeys or whatever you know i think it's made of corn you know so it's not too bad for them and uh, yeah a really beautiful place uh there's a couple of really nice restaurants by the river on the way in or out and the river's really beautiful uh you can go uh sort of uh float rafting in there or just have a swim in there it was running pretty rough this day uh, but yeah, beautiful place. Then of course there's my many trips to uh, Kanchanaburi, one of my favourite places in Thailand. I go there fairly regularly and it's a good place. And uh, went up there, did videos on uh, the bridge on the River Kwai of course. And also uh, did uh, Hellfire Pass which was a gut-wrenching emotional uh, journey for me. Uh, many Australians died there. It was, yeah, it, was, it was a touching it was a touching place to visit, Hellfire Pass, as was the bridge on the River Kwai. That is not the bridge on the River Kwai. That's the bridge that you come into, Kanchanaburi. These uh, photos, of course, uh, of uh, Wat Tham Sir, the Tiger Temple, 
that's uh, set up on a on a hillock on a mountain that guards Kanchanaburi. Yeah, that's also a beautiful place and a must do. Put it on your bucket list. Of course, uh, Kanchanaburi, you know, has the river. The river's fantastic. It's just a fantastic place to visit. Uh, uh, there's another stopover on the way from Cha'am to Kanchanaburi, which is a good place to stop for a rest on the way and have a food. Cowboy Cafe. It's fantastic. Stopped in there and had a coffee and, and a food uh, on the way up there on the bike. But of course, you know, I love Kanchanaburi, so there's a fair bit of Kanchanaburi in this video. Uh, yeah, I really like it. It's a beautiful place. Uh, it is the hottest uh, province in Thailand because it's sort of like a wok. It's surrounded by mountains, so you're sort of in the frying pan. But really, it does get extremely cold up there at night time in the, in the cold season, which it is now. So it can get very cold up there. The bridge on the River Kwai. Well, you can go back and look at the video I did on the bridge over, over the River Kwai. A very historic place with uh, a lot of sentiment and a lot of memories and a lot of feeling for a lot of Westerners, British, Canadian, Australian, Indian. Yeah, a lot of people uh, gave their lives there <coughs> building that Thai Burma railway. Really an amazing place, Kenchanaburi. You know, and then um, one time during the year, after one of my trips to Kanchanaburi and uh, during the uh, dating app period, uh, I did a little uh, trip away to Kosamet, Kosamet, which uh, beautiful little island uh, off Rayong, not far from Pattaya, and uh, had the island almost to ourselves. There was hardly anyone there due to the uh, situation of course and it had just opened up and we were like some of the first visitors there so it was only a handful of people on the island it was a really uh beautiful trip it was a a good time and uh it's a really beautiful place i recommend going there although in the season apparently it gets totally packed out bus loads of uh, chinese and uh Korean tourists are ferried over there so it gets expensive and it gets crowded best to go in there on the off season I would uh, assume of course you know there's entertainment there's the uh, obligatory fire show every night at several hotels on the water it is a really good place it is a really good place I really enjoyed that island and uh, the water's uh, fairly clean there good for swimming and uh, yeah just enjoyed it as you can see the fire show was uh, pretty wild um, and sort of enjoyed watching that and uh, I hadn't actually seen one before then of course there was the rather heart-wrenching emotional trip for me to uh, Hellfire Pass you can see all these walkways in uh, have been uh, made by the Australian government and their donations and they've set up a really good memorial centre and museum there. Of course, uh, that was closed due to the COVID situation so I couldn't get to see inside it. <clears throat> but as you can see, Hellfire Pass, I, I, I just can't imagine what it was like working there. The heat was unbearable. The mosquitoes were millionfold and uh, I just don't know how the people that did actually make it out of there made it out of there. So many died. Uh, a lot of people don't realise uh, there were 17,000 odd allied people died building this Thai Burma railway. But sadly, many people don't realise and don't understand the tax on the Thai people was phenomenal. There was hundreds of thousands of Thai people died during this period at the hands of the Japanese. It's not much is said about it, it's kept really quiet, but uh, you know, it needs to be known that the Thai people also really suffered uh, during this period of uh, Japanese uh, occupation and, uh, and war. 
uh, it was a terrible, terrible thing. And as I said, it was uh, it was heart wrenching for me when I made this video. There was so much I had to cut out because I actually got very, very teary thinking about it and thinking about the people that's and what they suffered there, these guys. And uh, yeah, so that was one period of uh, 2021 that uh, I will always remember. I may go back there again, I don't know. It's a pretty emotional sort of journey going to Hellfire Pass. The bridge over the River Kwai, not too bad, but Hellfire Pass has a history. We'd all prefer that it didn't happen, but it did. Yeah, and then there was uh, also during the uh, first period, the dating app period where I uh, did my first trip to Pattaya and uh, Bang Sen. Don't really like Pattaya so much. A lot of people love it. There's a lot of videos on Pattaya, but I did enjoy the hotel at Bang Sen. It was a really lovely hotel and there was uh, hardly any people there, so had the pool all to ourselves. Uh, enjoyed the stay, enjoyed the food. Uh, there wasn't a lot open because also this was during the uh, COVID uh, situation where everything was closed down, all the bars were closed, etc., etc. But did find a few things open and uh, luckily I was able to travel, whereas many people were fearful of travelling. Uh, many people wouldn't travel because of the situation, whereas uh, I did. And fortunately, got to see a lot of places without too many people and too many tourists. As you can see, uh, one of the places I went to that I thought was fantastic was this Chinese temple. So that was 2021, basically. Uh, I'm thinking of doing a series on uh, local small businesses to support local so small businesses around Cha Am. So if you think that's a good idea, I'd really like to hear your opinion in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel, please share the videos, and please let me know if you think it's a good idea if I do a series on uh, small businesses in Cha Am. Some of the smaller boutique hotels, uh, some of the economical hotels for people, some of the restaurants. Of course, it'll only be restaurants and places that I visited and had experience in, and I'll give you my honest opinion of them. Of course, I'll only do the ones that I did enjoy. I'm not going to do a, a critic of the ones I didn't enjoy. So if you think that's a good idea for my next series, uh, please let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all your subscribers' support. Thank you.